Okay. Hello, everyone. First, I want to thank you to join us today. We're going to talk about Cloud Kitty. Um, if you don't know what Cloud Kitty is, that's a great place to be. Um, my name is Christophe Sautier. I'm the CEO uh, of a company called Objective Libre. But I'm also the PTL and the co-father of Cloud Kitty. Um, with me here is uh, Maxime Cotre, who works with me at Objective Libre, and is also a co-developer at Cloud Kitty. Um, so as I told you, uh, we're going to talk to you about Cloud Kitty. Um, we're going to explain you first who we are, so what is Objective Libre. Uh, we're going to give you a small introduction to Cloud Kitty to explain you what it aims to do, to detail you a bit the infrastructure of Cloud Kitty, and we're going to give you a demonstration because I think it, things might be interesting on a, over a demonstration. Um, so you can start to pray for any god across your fingers because we, we'll try to do a live demo. So. We have some face, otherwise we might have some video for other things, but let's hope here we don't have to use it. Um, so Objective Libre, a French company, as you might hear that. Um, the company has been launched about eight, eight years ago. We do a lot of things, a lot of trainings, but also a lot of research and development. We are 20 people located in Toulouse, the hometown of the company, but also in Paris. And uh, we are quite used to the Open Stack Summit since it's the eighth, uh, the ninth, sorry, the ninth Open Stack Summit we are attending. Uh, why are we attending so much summit? Because we are quite involved in the Open in the Open Stack ecosystem. So basically, for our customers, we build and we run Open Stack Cloud. Okay, a lot of people do that. We also spread a lot of the culture. We are quite involved in all the meetups, all the yeah, all the summits and all the conferences that we can do. Um, and we developed a lot. That's why we are about to talk about Lockheed. I will just introduce you that in a few seconds. Um, like I said, we do a lot of development. Um, over the open stack history, we did about 900 comets. Uh, we currently have more than 10 people currently we are regularly contributing to OpenStack, which is, I think, quite good for a small company like, like we are. And we try to support the foundation as much as we can. Uh, since we, are, we have people who are certified, we are also a sponsor of the, um, of the foundation. And well, we will try to continue like this. Um, well, the thing that interests you today is Cloud Kitty. Um, Cloud Kitty is the rating component for OpenStack. Um, it has been developed since the beginning with the full respect of all the OpenStack best practices. Um, like you can imagine, when a small company like us starts to work on something like that, uh, we might have the temptation to bypass a few things, like to say, OK, this is my buddy. He will just validate what I do, and that's it. No, we actually are quite um, quite strict with everything like this, and we really try to follow all the best, best practices. Um, we have quite a lot of inter interactions with our other OpenStack uh, components. Of course, we are relying on Keystone for users and tenants and things like that. But for metrics, since we get all our data, all the data we process on, based on metrics, we rely on Silometer. And on Yoki, we have been quite a, a big users of Silometer. And when the, de when the Silometer team decided to launch Gnocchi, we, we have been informed by them. Uh, actually, the father of Gnocchi is a French guy, so he is, it helps a bit to talk with him. And he said, OK, why don't you use it? And said, yes, for sure. So right now, we are quite, a lot, quite some big users of Gnocchi. But we will explain you that a bit later, too. Um, we also have an integration over Horizon. Um, everything that you can do inside Cloud Kitty will be done using the, its API, like on every other OpenStack component. So when you want to play with it, when you want to use it, really, you can use the CLI or you can use Horizon. And that's it. And the thing that we have always on mind when we develop Cloud Kitty is its modularity. Um, we will explain you that in a few seconds, but we always try to do Cloud Kitty really, really modular. Um, by instance, as you can see on the schema here, 
On the left, yeah, on the left, we say that we have a matrix module and mirror or other. So all our collecting parts are different modules. Then we will get all the information on Cloud Kitty, and you see the new logo, which is quite nice actually. And we will have the view, which is an open stack, which is an horizon module, but we also in the past just provided a custom integration with whatever our customer asks. So we don't have to use explicitly Horizon. We can, since we are using the API, we can integrate with anything we want. Um, on this view, we can have the admin view or the user view. The admin view is where you, you're, as an administrator, you would define the rating policy and so the configuration of the various price you want to charge your users. Um, you may also have some cost follow-up uh, and the cost analysis of the usage of the cloud. Um, on the um, Horizon part, you can also have the user view. These are, the user view is where your users will know their, their, their usage and their cost, the, the cost of the usage of the cloud. Um, we also show you um, a feature we have in CloudKitty that we call predictive pricing because we also offer the possibility for a user to know the price is about to be charged for a resource before I even launch it. So before a user will launch its instance, you know the price, he will be charged for that. And it's on the horizon. And at the end, when all the data have been computed, when the user has used the service and used the cloud, we will extract all the data to actually produce the file and produce the material to build to create your bill because we are not a billing solution. We are clearly clear here to provide the information to bill your users, but we are not providing the billing solution. There are many, many billing solutions that exist and that do, does a great job for that. So using the API, you can fetch all this data all this data which are already treated. Uh, oh and yes, CloudKitty is an official project. We are in the big tent. So for about two years now. So basically, using CloudKitty as an IT manager, you can, try, you can define the pricing policy you want to charge your users because usually people want to charge internally. As a cloud provider, you can also cloud charge your users. And if you are a publisher, if you're editing a solution, a SaaS solution, you can rely on CloudKitty to fetch this, this information. We also did in the past some integration with non-cloud, non-open stack integration because sometimes people tell us, okay, I want to charge my users based on the flavor, on the image they're using, but I also might be interesting on charging them, by instance, on the number of users of the, inside the solution. So we said to these people, okay, just give us an API where we can fetch the number of users which are using the solution, and we can, and we'll be, we can get a metric from that, and as soon as we have the metric, you can base your price on that. So that's what we do, and that's why it's quite interesting also for people who are just creating solutions. I will let Max, uh, Maxim talk a bit about the internal aspects of CloudKitty. Okay, so um, the way CloudKitty is working is quite straightforward and is uh, following four steps. You are going to fetch which learner you want to rate uh, on your input stack. Then you collect the data you rate the data and you store the data for further, uh, uh, for further use, sorry. Uh, so the first step, the, the tenant fetcher, it's responsible for, the, for gathering the eligible tenants on your open stack. Uh, as Christophe said, the, all the architecture of CloudKitty is modular, so today we support Keystone V3 and uh, V2 and V3 uh, directly in Cloud, in Cloud Kitty. But if you want to use another uh, system, you can code your own system. The collector, the collector is uh, is used to pull the different backends uh, for metrics and metadata on your uh, OpenStack. It's this component that will use. Uh, Silometer or Cloud Kitty, for example, to get for a given tenant all the different resources uh, launched in your tenant. 
the metadata, the metadata um, associated with it, and the, the metrics. Uh, here, it's still modular. If you want to add another uh, collector, you can add it quite simply. And we support Silometer and Gnocchi uh, out of the box. For the rating, uh, the rating is the part uh, that will perform the calculation on the collected data. Uh, it's a system of uh, prioritized modules that are executed sequentially and based on the priority. You can enable different uh, modules at the same time, so have them uh, working <coughs> together on the collected data. Uh, such modules can be configured, enabled, and disabled directly from the MPI, from the CLI, or from Horizon. And it's still modular. Uh, one focus on one of the main uh, module out of the box in CloudKitty is HMAP. HMAP uh, allows you to create either a generic module that allows you to create uh, rating policy in a simple manner. It will uh, do the calculation based on the metadata and the metrics gathered by the collector. You will, have, uh, you will be uh, able to add a rating policy based on threshold value on some uh, metrics. And you will uh, be able to group uh, calculation uh, to create complex uh, operations. And at the end, uh, all uh, rated uh, resources will be uh, stored uh, for, an, uh, for further usage and will be queryable by uh, the API. Today, uh, US SQL Alchemy and uh, SQL is, the base, uh, is a default uh, backend for storage but there is also an early support for Gnocchi. And once you have everything, you are ready for billing at the end. Uh, you have to, in order to use uh, quite simply uh, the, the rated data, there is uh, an associated tool uh, can, that you can use to provide reports uh, from the data of CloudKitty. Uh, it's a simple exporter uh, of the data in multiple files like OSRF or S, uh, CSV. And uh, you will be able to use those uh, exported data in your billing system, for example, as you can do with uh, AWS, for example. Yes, the file which is um, exported using the, <coughs> the writer, which is the tool we are mentioning here, is um, fully compatible with the tool which is produced by AWS. Actually, there's a tool, there's, they, are, they are producing a, a format called program, program, programmatic billing, sorry, and uh, we are clearly compatible with it. So if you are already using data from AWS and you want to use the same thing using OpenStack, you won't have to change nothing at all. So as we say, everything uh, in this different step are modular and you can quite uh, easily hack uh, CloudKitty code to add your own, uh, your own code to fit your needs. Let's try the... Uh, uh, yes. Um, we're going to do a live demo, like I said. Um, but if something goes wrong, we also have some videos. And um, we put the videos on YouTube already, so you can see them later. And you just have to look at this URL, and you'll be able to, to see them. OK, so. Uh, Submit. Let's submit. Or, submit. Uh, yeah. So I log up. Dun, dun. Ah. 
plus one. So we just installed a few minutes ago um, a blank open stack on which we just install additional services, Cloud Kitty for sure, but also Silometer and Gnocchi. And we're going to use everything right now. Okay, here you can see uh, the different modules uh, out of the box, uh, provided out of the box by Cloud Kitty. They have uh, the Noop is a dummy test, uh, just a dummy module. Hashmap is the one we will see today, and you have also uh, uh, a patch scrap module that enables you to uh, push uh, Python script to, uh, the cloud, to Cloud Kitty, and it will enable you to have a custom, quite simply custom uh, um, processing on the collected data. So here you can see that uh, both Asmap and PyScript are enabled and have, uh, you can set priority to the module in order to uh, specify in which order you want the module to be executed. Every module is executed sequentially uh, each time uh, for each period of rating. So if you want a module to be uh, executed before another one, just have to, uh, uh, have to put a higher priority. In the HashMap uh, section, you will be able to uh, define your policy. For example, I will create a service uh, for example, for the uh, a compute service that will, uh, uh, using the compute service, I will be able to uh, provide rating uh, on the instance running on your OpenStack. Just have to, uh, okay. For a given services, you have uh, two type of uh, rules you can uh, provide. One rule is based directly on the service. You just put uh, a price for the consumption of the service, but you can also uh, provide uh, rules uh, on metadata of your uh, services. It will be able to, uh, this uh, functionality uh, will provide you the, the um, the possibility to fill uh, multiple rules that will match some uh, value on metadata of the resource and to get the right price. For example, on the, the I will create a new field uh, using the flavor ID, for example, of my instance. I will get uh, gallery, the ID. For example, I'll try to use the uh, sorry. Oop. Okay. So I'll get the ID of a flavor. Here the, the micro ID. Here I will create a new mapping uh, that will say the, that for this given flavor, I want to, for example, uh, apply a cost of two dollar, uh, euro, what you want. Uh, and it will be, uh, it's a, a flat price. That means that for every collect uh, period, if you have one instance uh, with this given flavor, it will be a, a rate with two. I create a group instance. Already I have one. Okay. Uh, here you can provide a rules, uh, generic rules for the whole instance. But if you provide a project ID or project name, you can specify that this rule is only for this given project. For example, here I will create a rule that will be only uh, applied on the submit project. 
Okay, here I have the first rules. I can do um, no, not, uh, not this one. I can do another one. New mapping because this flavor is larger, I will put a higher price, for example. Okay, so here you have two rules uh, that will map the, the flavor mapping of your instance to choose which rate you want to apply on your resources. Um, okay, I will try with another one, for example, volume. If you want to, uh, volume will allow you to uh, rate uh, the consumption of your cinder, uh, cinder resources. Uh, okay. Sorry. Here I will apply directly service mapping. I know that uh, for every um, collect period, I will have the amount of volume used for my tenant. So here I will put a price directly on the whole volume used for the given tenant. Five, for example. I will try another room. Okay, but if I want to provide, for example, uh, a discount for people who use a lot of, uh, of volume, I can have a threshold on my services. This threshold, you will be able to say, for example, if a user uh, uh, use on a collect period more than 100 gigabyte of volume. I can say that I will apply a rate on this volume and he will be charged only 5% uh, uh, less of the price, for example. Okay, so here are the different manner you have to create simple rules with, um, with simple rating rules with hash map. One thing interesting that uh, Christoph said earlier is the ability to... Uh, Actually, uh, like okay. we said, we are doing a, a live demonstration and I just realized that I think I forgot to put something on the demonstration. Actually, I think we don't, I don't, I didn't add any image to the to this instance, so, so that we cannot use it. So maybe I can just uh, yes. do it. Sorry. You know when you do things like this, sometimes it happens. Um, <laughs> we just do it. It shouldn't be too long. Okay, I know, I know I type a password. Um, so you see everything. Um, we gave an end zone yesterday on that, so I'm just taking everything from there. I just have to type these things. Oh. 
Okay. There we go. I think I just might need just to say lunch here. Okay, we are the server. Yeah, yeah. Sorry it's for that. Thank you. So it's really a live demo, as you said, as I said. <laughs> okay, so I'll create a new VM. And for example, we see that for the macro uh, flavor, we specify a value of two for the rating. So if I create uh, a new instance with this flavor, I will get normally. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying. Sorry. Yeah, I think uh, you're right, but I think you just went now today. Just uh, no. No. What happens? Uh, micro. There is no reason. Okay. It's the demo effect. You should have the um, uh, uh, preview of the price that the. Uh, we, we can use the, the we can, we can use the video if you yes. want to. Yes, would be better. So it's not as beautiful. So we are just, I'm, I'm sure you see it was better before that, but we are just using one of the thing here. When, and you have a price, which is right here. Oh no, it's not, you cannot see there. You, you, have a, you had the link on the, on the thing. And it, the thing you will see on your computer is that um, the price has changed accordingly of what we just used. And all the different, um, oh, 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 maybe it was just a bit long. I don't know why. The micro, let's use the nano. So the price is here, but it's not accordingly. Okay. Yeah. So usually, all the thing it's supposed to do is just to change accordingly of the choice you did. Um, We also have another video about reporting. Um, so <clears throat> once your user has been charged, you will be able to see a, a report. So the rating summary is just the total of price. It just been charged for that. And right here, you have uh, some graph that explain the various repartition of the usage. Um, on the left, it says, for instance, the, the, the blue one is for network out. The green one is for the network in. The purple here is for a compute, and so on. So the name here has the name of the various services that we have, uh, that we have choose on the, on the first page of CloudKitty. And right here is the price over the time with the same color. And, uh, yeah, I think you can, and here is an example of the uh, CSV that uh, the, the Cloud Kitty writer tools will uh, allow you to export and to use in your billing system. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So actually, we are using a REST call to query the API and reproduce that. So you can just, uh, we are cur currently with CloudKitty by default, we have this file format, but we also have a JSON one, and you can do whatever you want. That's the idea. Actually, I'm quite disappointed that we are facing this issue because, like I said yesterday, we did an end zone telling to people and explaining to people how to use it. There were about 30 or 30 people in, this, in, the, in the room, and it worked for everyone. So the only people who just miss it is us today. Um, <clears throat> never mind. Um, 
The title of the presentation was Present and Future of Cloud Kitty, so let's talk a bit about the future. Um, we have noted a three, three level of future. Uh, first, um, Cloud Kitty is already usable, for sure, but the one other thing which lacks a bit is some visibility for the project. So we will continue to expand the number of metrics we want to be able to, to fetch. So on the third quarter of this year, we will have uh, an initial release with uh, collecting data from Monasca directly. Um, by the end of the year, we really, really want to be able to be integrated with all the major open stack distribution. We currently have packages for Ubuntu. We are also in the RDO repository. So, and the, the packages I've been using are from Oketa RDO right now. But um, we want to be able to go a step further than that. Uh, we want to be able, by instance, uh, have our own appliance inside Alien. We want to, and we already start to work on that. We also have a puppet module for that. that we have uh, open, uh, we have a cloud kit, um, on the OpenStack Ansible thing, there is some stuff to deploy Cloud Kitty, but we want, yes, a step for that. Um, and by early next year, we will have uh, a way to collect metrics only from containers, not only using OpenStack. Uh, actually, um, we really want also, we always, we all want to be able to have a standalone release of Cloud Kitty by the end of the year. Uh, when I mean standalone, I mean without using the OpenStack scope. Because um, we all see during the summit that the containers are everywhere. And so we want to go to be able to fetch directly things on containers. And uh, we are working, by instance, on um, a way to collect things on Prometheus. So we'll be able to fetch information from Kubernetes. Um, on technical thing, um, we will have uh, by the third quarter of this year, uh, the, version, the versioning of the pricing policy so that you'll be able to go forward and if, if you want to change and to go back and to roll back to your, your previous uh, pricing policy. And uh, we also want to be able to configure on the, using an API and not just on the configuration file, the rating period. Oh, and translation are quite important for us especially since we are French and French don't like to speak English, so we have to do that quite soon. It's too late already. Um, and uh, we, also, we, we also try to be present on a few open source events. It's, it's easy for us to attend something called the Cloud Week in Paris at the end of the, just before the summer, but um, we want also to be able to be part of the PTG. You know, PTG is the new summit for developers, we haven't, we've choose not to attend the previous one. Uh, the next one might be a bit complicated in Denver, especially since the team is mainly in France, but we also have some con contributors in China. It's not really easy for them to join for us. Uh, so we are about to, we are envisaging, we are talking about doing a virtual PTG. So you are clearly free to attend. Uh, and um, maybe we'll be in Sydney for the next OpenStack Summit. Um, what can I say more? Um, you can try CloudKT quite easily. Uh, first with DevStack. Uh, DevStack is quite easy to do. You just have to put that on your little local conf and that's it. Uh, so you have CloudKT inside DevStack. But also you can deploy CloudKT using the various packages that we have that I already mentioned. It's uh, on RDO or it's in Ubuntu, so it's really, really simple. And the documentation has been really, really improved over the last cycle. So just do it. And if you have any question, we are here. Uh, we do, uh, we also have, sorry, about, uh, I don't think about that. Okay. We are also have uh, an RC channel. So join us and I'll drop, drop me an email or talk to me on Twitter or whatever you want, but just join. Thank you. If you have any question, we are here for sure. No, the question. Is <laughs>